Well, we got the car painted. We used a lot of paint. I can tell you that. A lot of paint was used. You can see that the gallon of clear is gone. We ran out of epoxy primer. I want to go ahead and show you. I was telling you that I use a slow hardener. I use a slow hardener with the clear. I use a medium reducer with the paint. I want that paint to dry real fast, not super fast, but faster than normal because I don't want it to get orange peel in it. And if you let it dry too fast, it'll get orange peel. If you let it dry too slow, you're going to get runs. So it's important to make sure you use all your chemicals properly. But uh, to clear coat that car, it took a whole gallon of clear. And we got about an eighth of a quart left of paint. A lot of paint. Let's go over and look and see what we got here. I want to show everybody what's going on. Go ahead and turn that off. All right, we got the paint booth off. Um, when I'm painting in this weather, what I do, I take my heater, and then of course I face it, and then uh, the paint booth will suck the heat in. It works very well. So we'll go ahead and turn it off. And it look knows what happened. I don't know, but it quit by itself. So uh, we're gonna go look at the car and then we're gonna go ahead and finish this little video up. Um, you can see it's painted. Now I'm gonna go ahead and walk into the paint booth. And you can see this has been an all day job, but I'm gonna go ahead and walk into the paint booth. The wind's not blowing, so we're safe. And hopefully we won't lose connection. Once again, this is Wi-Fi. I got cheap Wi-Fi. It doesn't work the best. But uh, let's go ahead and get a gander at the bodywork on this car. And you can basically see in the picture that this came out really, really nice. I'm really, really satisfied with it. I was very worried due to the fact that this was a junkyard car but the bodywork came out excellent. And I mean, it couldn't have been any better. It could have been better, but once again, the word is how. How good does the job have to be? How good do we have to do this job to make it a job that says, hey, this is fucking great, you know? Um, we got three coats of paint, three coats of clear, and it's Dodge Viper Red. So it really came out nice. I don't want to walk all the way up into the paint booth. Uh, we'll lose connection, but you kind of get the idea here. We didn't get any runs in the paint, which is great. We didn't get any trash that spit out from the spray gun. That's awesome because that usually happens with me, I don't know why. And the clear retention is beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down. Uh, let's go ahead and turn that off, there you go, okay. So we looked at the car, you saw the car, we painted the car, and everything came out beautiful. I don't want bugs going in there, I don't want gnats flying into the paint. Once again, it's... Uh, Still pretty warm out here in Dallas, Texas. Uh, we can see that the temperature has dropped 10 degrees. But what is the situation? I'll explain it to you. This is what's gonna give you the best job. This is what's gonna give you the best job. This is what's gonna give you the best job. You are gonna give yourself the best job. And final conclusion, is this is gonna give you the best job. How much money, this goes out to all the people out there, how much money does the customer pay you to do the job? How much 
work can you actually do on the car until you tell yourself, I'm doing it for free. I'm not making a profit. But you continue to do that car to the best that you can do because you are that type of person. Some people out there aren't that type of person. Some people out there are only in it to make a dime. And those people don't have a conscience, but I know you do. You have a conscience. Sorry, I have pain all over my hand because I busted my ass. So how far do we go to get the best job we can? As far as your conscience will take you to do the job. As far as the tool you use and how you master that tool to make it the best tool in your hand. As far as the paint supplies go to get the best paint supplies to your knowledge and to use those paint supplies continuously to master the use of this primer and knowing this primer is gonna do you a good job and not changing product after product after product to nickel and dime yourself or, oh, this cost $180. Well, I could get a gallon of primer, $50. Why do I need to buy that shit? Because that's the stuff that's gonna give you the job that it takes to do the job. My life. I will stick, as far as paint goes, as far as the base coat paint, I will always use PPG. I will never use anything else. I've learned that reducers, it doesn't matter what brand you got. Get the cheapest reducer you can as long as it's a urethane reducer. Everything that you use in today's automotive paint world is urethane base. You don't thin, or I, yeah, you don't thin, you don't reduce anything with mineral spirits or acetone or lacquer thinner. I've actually heard people put lacquer thinner in with their high build primer. The best job that you're gonna get and how good the job is going to turn out is all up to you. You see my shop is a mess. We've been working our asses off. I have another gallon of clear here that I purchased today and the reason I purchased that is because I knew it was gonna take a whole gallon of clear to clear coat just that car. Just to clear coat that car was gonna take a whole gallon. And I still am not done painting this car. I still have to paint the deck lid. I gotta paint the brand new hood that the owner purchased. We're gonna go look at that in the box. I don't even have it out of the box yet. Where's that? There it is right there. So we got a brand new hood that we got to paint. We still got the deck lid we got to paint and we got the front nose piece we got to paint. So we're not even done painting because a paint job like this is a minimum, a minimum three full days just to paint the car. This is Pete. We're over here at DIY Auto School. We're working late. Um, I was going to leave for Moab, Utah tomorrow. Anybody that's been following me excessively knows that back in September, I ordered a building, a 16 foot by 26 foot building that I'm going to make my paint booth out of. And the building company fucked me around and I ordered another building from a different company, the company that, uh, I was referred to by that they were the most reliable. I went ahead and ordered that uh, building and they told me it would take a maximum of eight weeks and more likely it would be six weeks. It's already going on 12, no actually it's going on 13 weeks and these fucking assholes have still not come through with my building. They told me that it was gonna be here this weekend they told me that my building would be here Saturday. They just emailed me today and said, oh, I'm so sorry to inform you, but we don't have a crew that can come out there on Saturday. 
We're hoping it will be next week, but we can't guarantee anything. And I'll get a hold of you on Friday. They've told me that three times. That's not a good job. That is not, how do you know when it's the best job? That's not it, because they're unreliable. And being reliable means being something that when you say something, you stick to your guns. So I probably won't get my building next week, but we will be going to Moab, Utah. I want to thank everybody that's watched this series on uh, Moreland's 1967 GTO. And I hope that somebody out there, more than one person hopefully, has got the message It was a, I'll be posting a after picture of this vehicle on there. And I want everybody to take a look at what tools the body shop have to master and learn how to use to make it the best job possible. This is my desk right here. This is it. I have had that shelf, believe it or not, that shelf that you're looking at right there. I have had that shelf for 35 years. That shelf has been a paint shelf for me to hold my supplies like that for 35 fucking years. This is a tool to make my job better. There's nothing else I can say. That's it. It's a done deal. All I can say is support my friend Pete above this. No, actually below this. No, above this comment area where you are putting a comment, there are t-shirts out there for sale. I don't ask people for money. I don't want anybody to give me anything. At this time in my life, I can handle my own situations. And here's another job that we're talking about. How good is it going to be? How good? This is a 1970 Roadrunner convertible. The doors on this car were junkyard doors. These are probably the worst doors I've ever done body work to, believe it or not. But this is another job that has to be done before I leave Dallas, Texas. We'll be looking at this and we might do a little walk around to this one like we did our GTO. But uh, it's time to go. I'm rambling now. Let me turn my air compressor off. And I want to wish everybody out there, as I'm closing down, I think I hear my air compressor leaking. I got to fix this. It's leaking air. That's on my to-do list tomorrow. I'll be fixing that bitch tomorrow. Okay. We're going to head out. Uh, I was going to put this sign up for auction. Maybe make a few bucks, you know, to help me move. Um, but I don't think anybody would want to buy it. So I'm going to go ahead and take it with me. I'm going to have it sandblasted and I'm going to repaint it, take it with me. So anyway, Southwest Rod and Custom right, right there. Always remember one thing, people. Always remember that right there. That's it. That's your answer. No matter what fucking happens to life, no matter how bad things can get, no matter how good the job is or how bad it is, right there is your answer. Right there. Take it easy, and we'll see you on the next one, guys.